uh, firmly back in the realm of classics for today's films. Um, these are two films that were on TCM recently that I had been meaning to see for various reasons. And there they were there on Watch TCM, so I watched them. The first one is 1936's Petticoat Fever. It is a screw-all comedy directed by George Fitzmaurice, starring Robert Montgomery, Myrna Loy, and Reginald Owen. I have now seen 59 Robert Montgomery movies. 59. Um, he made somewhere around 75 or so, so I'm, I'm missing some still. But I'm getting there, and uh, I just love Robert Montgomery, the actor. I don't look into his personal life. I just, I'm just gonna like put a veil there. As an actor, I find him incredibly charming. So in the 40s and 50s, he gets very like tough and and, and dark, and does like the war thing and all that stuff that happened to a lot of these actors. But in the 30s, he's just so weird, and he makes all these faces, and his movies make no sense. He plays characters that are completely fictional, like they would never exist in real life, such people. Um, and so I love Robert Montgomery for that reason, and I love his presence and his persona, and uh, I enjoy his films, even when they're not great. Um, case in point, Petticoat Fever is sort of a, I hate the phrase lesser or whatever, but it's kind of a lesser um, screwball comedy based on a, a stage play, as many of these screwball comedies were. Um, in it, Robert Montgomery is the nephew of a rich, I think it's a baron or something in England, and he's feuding with his uncle, and so he has to leave, and he's found himself in Labrador as, of all things, a um, radio operator in the middle of nowhere Labrador. Cut to Reginald Owen and Myrna Loy are about to get married. They're also British, or she's British, and he's from... Montreal, something like that, uh, and on their, they're trying to fly to Montreal for this big hoop to do when their plane crashes and they get saved by Robert Montgomery and his Eskimo uh, manservant named, I think it's Yumi, Kimo, got it totally wrong, Kimo, played by Otto Yamo Yamoka, who was in several films playing various Asian characters throughout the 30s, generally not the best representation of Asian and or Asian Americans. He was born in Seattle and was one of those many, like many an actor, um, had to put on terrible broken English to, you know, play the Asian character. And that's kind of awful. And there's a lot of it in this film because there's a lot of Eskimo and Eskimo jokes and things in this film. Um, and there's several other um, Asian Americans playing Eskimos in this film. Uh, of both Japanese and Chinese descent, neither of whom are Eskimos. So that's an issue. Um, <laughs> an issue. Um, the film, basically, so Robert Montgomery falls in love with Myrna Loy, um, wants to try to steal him, for, steal her from Reginald Owen. Later, you find out that he has a fiancé. Well, early in the movie, you find out he has a fiancé coming, so you know that's happening. Um, and then you find out why she's finally decided to come and join him and how that's going to cause, you know, issues because he, he's still chasing after Myrna Loy. It's a, a screwball comedy, so you kind of know where everything's going to go. Um, I did like it because there was a lot of fake snow and um, Robert Montgomery gets to make all his crazy Robert Montgomery faces. Not in my top ten favorite Robert Montgomery films, but I'm glad that I saw it. Uh, the next film I watched is Todd Browning's Fast Workers from 1933. Now, this film was one that Browning was not proud of. He had just commercially failed with Freaks, which we now know is one of the great films of all time. Um, he made this film. He produced it. He directed it. It was work that was way below him. He took eventually took his name off it, so he's uncredited. It's one of the last starring roles if not the last starring role for John Gilbert. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting misfire. There's bits of it that are really good. Again, it's based on a play. Um, John Gilbert and Robert Armstrong are two uh, guys who work on the big steel buildings that are being built. And um, John Gilbert sort of plays the field. And Robert Armstrong's character has like a big heart, but 
he has a roving eye, but he thinks all the women are much better than they are, and he falls in love with nice girls who never turn out to be nice girls. This movie has some gender politic issues. Um, they see Mae Clark. John Gilbert obviously has a thing for Mae Clark. He's one of her, or she's one of his many women. He's one of her many men. Um, she makes a living fleecing men for their money. She meets Robert Armstrong through some uh, means with John Gilbert in a speakeasy, but pretends they don't know each other um, and manages to become this man's fiance when she finds out he has $5,000 saved, which is a lot of money for 1933. Things go awry because obviously now we're in a love triangle, plus Mae Clark is having issues with all the other, like, lady fleecers, and then John Gilbert is trying to deal with the fact that he is basically a playboy, but he also has feelings, and what does that mean? Um, and then on top of all of that, their ter their idea of what women are are terrible. And every once in a while, you get moments where the May Clark character gets um, some depth with her character and gets to really show how these women wind up the way they are. Um, but the rest of the movie is so hell-bent in showing women a in a really terrible light that... Um, she never even really gets much redemption. It's unfortunate. Uh, but John Gilbert is beautiful in this film. He has the best hair. Uh, it, it's, it's finally sort of finding a good talky persona for him because as, as a silent film star, he was, you know, uh, burned the screen up with his sexuality. And, and what is so hot in the silent era comes across a little, a little dicey in this talky era. He's a little too slick. And um, some of his early films where he's supposed to be charming, he's, he's just sort of sn snaky. And so they finally get him in a movie like this where they play up that persona. And Todd Browning is such a great director that he really lets um, Gilbert be who he is and who he should have been as a, a talking actor. And unfortunately, as we well know, Gilbert did not make very many movies after this one. And he never really got to build this um, slick sort of playboy persona that he could have done really well, especially if he'd lived into the era of the um, screwball comedy. I feel like he would have been great at screwball comedy. And he probably would have killed it in film noir as, like, aging older villains. God. Oh, I want that now. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to write a future where that happened uh, and just imagine it. So this was uh, Fast Workers from 1933. And um, I already forgot the name of the other one, Petticoat Fever from 1936. They are both on DVD from Warner Archive Collection. They are um, streaming currently on Watch TCM. And I think Fast Workers you can also rent from Amazon. So there are many ways to watch these movies. Uh, definitely if you're a Robert Montgomery or Myrna Loy completist, Petticoat Fever. If you are interested in, in a interesting but sort of misfire of a pre-code with John Gilbert I recommend Fast Workers but really with John Gilbert I recommend going back and watching all his silent films he is so amazing at the height of his career like oh my god um anyways all the movies enjoy them keep watching them have a good night